Terrier. Caleb. Polaris. New weapons that are bringing reaching changes to naval warfare. about a carrier exercise. This is especially so today, now that new weapons, new missiles, are changing the scope and dimension of naval warfare. With these new weapons, there are new skills to learn, new techniques to master. Sparrow III air-to-air -air missiles are received from the carrier's ordnance room. Fighter is ready. In today's fighter, the pilot's world of space, time, and speed is reduced to instrument readings in his cockpit telling him there's a target, its distance, bearing, and speed. In its few seconds of flight, Sparrow 3 formulates and solves an equation, and a target drone meets destruction. Attack bombers now streak from the carrier heading for a target range on the desert. Their payload is Bullpup, a new missile for ground support use. Small targets that require extreme accuracy. Bullpup responds to the invisible touch of a radio beam. With error reduced to a few feet, it has rendered the bomb all but obsolete for these tactical uses. The atmosphere of urgency is not confined to the carrier and surrounding sky. A desert region echoes to the blast of a Navy rocket engine. Off the coast of California, a Polaris missile shape is hurled from the depths. On the Atlantic coast, the powerful Talos surface-to-air missile is unveiled to the public at the commissioning ceremonies for a new cruiser. In a relatively short period of time, the missile has become an astonishingly potent force in the fleet as a result of the Navy's effort to seek new ways of asserting its tradition, ever important role of controlling the sea. Today, the fleet can move to almost all of the ocean areas of the world, concentrate enormous power at virtually any point on the globe. A little over a decade ago, power of this dimension would have seemed an incredible, almost impossible accomplishment. For then, the missile, only in its infancy, scarcely hinted of its destined role. This is BAT, the year 1945. By today's standards, BAT was a primitive, cumbersome weapon. The Navy employed this missile against Japanese shipping in the latter months of the war. It was the first successful air-launched automatic missile to be used by any nation. In 1947, Operation Sandy, experiments in launching ballistic missiles from the deck of a ship heralded further changes in the Navy.
also in those early years of the missile age, Loon was fired from a submarine, demonstrating the varied application missiles could have in the Navy. Bat, Loon, Operation Sandy, and the many other experiments also revealed gigantic that would have to be solved before a single missile would become operational. Among these problems were space limitations of naval vessels. The ballistic rocket of the day was sleep too large for practical employment from a ship's deck, too bulky for storage and quantity. What was needed was a small rocket of long-range capability, but such a rocket did not exist. Another related problem was safety. The typical ballistic rocket used liquid fuel, which tended to vaporize and have corrosive effects on equipment. Fueling could be hazardous and laborious. A powerful, compact, solid fuel rocket was needed, but some experts said it was impossible to build. Missile reliability was another perplexing problem. Missiles are delicate, sensitive instruments, demanding the most care treats them harshly. A ship can move from tropical to polar waters in a few days, experiencing drastic changes in temperature, humidity, and sea conditions. The circuitry and mechanisms of a missile suffer as a result. Unless equipped with special ruggedized weapons, naval vessels could be crippled by the malfunctioning of their own equipment. Finally, the most difficult problem of all, navigation in a trackless, restless ocean. To launch a ballistic missile accurately, position has to be known with a precision that no conventional instrument can measure. This problem seemed to defy solution. All these problems and others revealed in early missile experiments could be solved only by a large-scale missile research and development program. Studies began at the Navy's well-equipped, well-staffed laboratory. Engineers, scientists, technicians explored the fields of electronics. Metallurgy. Aerodynamics. Propulsion. New ideas led to new designs. New designs led to experimental equipment which had to be tested. The role of the nation's missile test centers became more prominent as the missile programs of the services increased in pace. At the Atlantic Missile Range, Cape Canaveral, Florida, Polaris missile components and prototypes began tests. Today, the Navy's facility there is under expansion to provide for more extensive testing. The White Sands Missile Test Range became another site for testing of Navy vehicles. Here, Talos undergoes a firing. The Navy directed Pacific Missile Range at Point Magoo, California was a scene of experimentation with new missile equipment. Regular, Sparrow, and others. Its facilities are also being enlarged to permit more extensive testing by all three of the services. But even with more than a dozen Navy agencies, laboratories, and stations engaged in missile development, the magnitude of the program was beyond their resources. Facilities of private industry and higher education were also required 
to meet the challenge. Under such a coordinated team effort, problems could be solved with greater speed. And problems did begin to find solutions. One answer to the reliability problem was simplicity. Sidewinder, developed by the Navy Bureau of Ordnance, is a brilliant example. An astonishingly accurate weapon, Sidewinder homes on the heat radiated by aircraft. Even more astonishing is the simplicity of its guidance mechanism. It consists of 12 moving parts. Easy to maintain, easy to assemble for action, this deadly weapon is ideal for shipboard use. For that require more intricate electronic mechanisms, other means were found to achieve reliability. The packaged component concept was used in the design of Sparrow III and other weapons. The missile has separate sealed components that are easily assembled on shipboard. Each component is given a simple reliability test before use. Any component that fails the test is set aside to be returned to a shore facility. Extensive research and experimentation brought solutions to the solid fuel rocket engine problem. Here, batches of the fuel are mixed to be molded directly to the engine walls. In the fall of 1957, a rocket engine was secured to its test bed and lighted off. Its success signaled a new advance in rocketry. It gave the Navy the powerful, compact, solid fuel engine it was seeking. This achievement aided in the solution of another problem, that of designing a ballistic missile small enough for practical shipboard use. Polaris, partly because of this engine, could be notably smaller than the giant liquid-fueled intermediate-ranged rockets, yet give comparable performance. Teamwork is now paying off in the navigational problem also. Three groups a Navy research team, a well-known instrument manufacturer, and MIT's instrumentation laboratory are developing inertial navigation equipment that will give extremely accurate position readings. A system of gyros and accelerometers sense changes in direction and acceleration from which range and position are accurately computed. A Navy cargo ship, the Compass Island, has been converted into a floating laboratory to study and perfect this navigational system. The massive development and research program has brought far-reaching changes to the fleet. Missile production lines bear witness to the accomplishments of the program. At a plant in Florida, Bullpup is in quantity production. Here, its guidance circuitry is fabricated. In Wisconsin, the delicate inertial guidance system of a submarine-launched missile is assembled under controlled conditions to prevent any imbalance in the delicate mechanism. At a port city, carrier missiles are received at a naval depot where they are inspected, tested, and prepared for shipment to the fleet. They are received aboard a modern, fully operational missile ship. The missiles are given reliability tests, go-no-go no go tests, as they're called. They are assembled. Automatic equipment transfers the missile topside to the launcher. Target detection equipment takes over, locks on the target. Control equipment sends the missile on its path to the target.
from bat to terrier has been a long, tough road of research, development, and production. The path from Operation Sandy to Polaris has been perhaps even more difficult. Polaris underwater launching device is tested at a plant on the west coast. Tests are continued beneath the sea, where actual water and current effects can be measured and evaluated. The atomic-powered submarines that will carry Polaris are already under construction. Polaris itself undergoes firing tests at Cape Canaveral. The Navy's missile program in the last decade has made enormous strides. At the same time, it must be pointed out that this program has required human and physical resources, which are not inexpensive commodities. It is then fair to ask, what is it doing for this country in terms of military security? The Navy is unique as a flexible, mobile fighting force that can be deployed globally. All of its missiles, regardless of type, are ship-based. Thus, they give a vital tactical advantage, mobility and elusiveness. Some can achieve complete concealment, like the missile-armed atomic submarine with its proven ability to cruise under the ice cap. The ability of the missile navy to operate over the millions of square miles of ocean increases the effective range of its weapons, of its missile-carrying aircraft, and its ship-launched weapons. Polaris range is 1,500 miles, but from its submarine launched platform, it can penetrate far into the heart of any of the continental land masses. Unlike the fixed launching sites of the land-based ICBMs, the missile navy cannot be pinpointed for ballistic missile attacks. A massive, sudden, unprovoked attack by an enemy is always a possibility in this age of nuclear weapons and missiles. But the Navy, significantly, acts as a deterrent to such an attack. For no enemy could accomplish his goal of complete annihilation as long as the Navy remains a powerful, growing force in world security.